Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic, and Mysticism, here to talk to you more about the occult and the paranormal. Well, today I'm going to be talking about the sound of music and angelic communication. Uh, before we begin, as usual, I just want to um, say that I have a new attunement in my Etsy attunement store. I have Padre Pio, Saint Pio. So um, for those of y'all who are uh, fans of uh, Saint Pio, feel free to check that out. Um, he has demonstrated quite a number of paranormal phenomena, things that have been observed by observers, really um, even weird stuff by location, levitation. Um, you can uh, call upon him to help you develop the reading of the souls, reading of people's spirits uh, without having any knowledge of them. Um, he is good for connecting to the divine. He, he was a mystic. So if you want to learn how to connect with the beauty and all the wonderful things around you that are part of this uh, existence, then uh, Padre Pio, St. Pio would be your guy. I also have the genius psychic powers attunement that I've done recently in Kamiel. So I'll put a link in the description. Uh, so let's get started. All right. So the sound of music in angelic communication. Now I did a video, I want to say maybe a year, year and a half ago, about how uh, different, we call them guides. Um, I kind of, for myself, kind of pinned on my holy guardian angel. Uh, one of the practices that they will do, in fact, fact, they will do whatever it is that they need to do to capture your attention. Uh, they're very clever. Uh, one of the things that uh, can happen. And it's kind of the following. So and this has happened to me, as I mentioned, uh, I might be thinking, pondering a particular question. There's something on my mind, an issue, a problem. And I kind of even don't really mean to, but I'm saying, you know, what do I do about this? And I'm not in intentionally trying to ask for guidance sometimes. But, you know, those are the thoughts that be coming through my head. And then, you know, I'll go about my business and it may be one or two days later, all of a sudden I'll hear a song and it's usually a song that I um, haven't heard. Like I remember last time I haven't heard that one for like 20 years and it got stuck in my head and I didn't hear it outwardly. It just was there. And I kept hearing it and hearing it. And then, you know, I started singing along. And uh, over time, I was thinking, I said, why am I ruminating about this song? Why is it turning in my head without any type of stimulus to for this to happen? So I was thinking, okay, uh, I've had experience with this before. So now I start to have to start to think about what the lyrics are saying. So I start to think about it and even, you know, look online to see, you know, what exactly, because sometimes you can mishear words and I want to make sure I got it right. And then I'll say, okay, so that could be a message. What is that a message about? And then, I have, then if I backtrack, it'll usually be a message about something that I had been worrying about. And it's um, so cool because once that that connection is made, there's like this aha moment. And then magically, the song is no longer in my head, disappears, fades away. And that is uh, a product of angelic uh, communication. Um, I've observed it um, in other people and in my life. So let me know in the comments if that has happened to you. In fact, if you are people who are like to read, if you ever want to read uh, something pretty dense, read some of the works of St. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote extensively about things like angels and demons. And he um, pretty much flat out said that 
uh, and angels and demons can affect our thoughts um, and our emotions, can influence them. So that is in alignment definitely with what he said. But, you know, that's just one example. You know, we, you can hear these things, or well, everybody can hear them. You know, we are a mix of abilities of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgustatory. That's an example of clairaudience, hearing, messages. Uh, we, and if we're talking about music in general, uh, we can hear it uh, often if we do astral traveling. Sometimes I do. I've talked to other people who, you know, when they're looking at the sensory experience of traveling astrally, they'll see these wonderful, uh, almost like vibrant artistic colors. And then they will hear these very rich sounds and music. Uh, it's definitely a part of the other world and as a medium uh, maybe the other side uses in order to communicate with us now what about the history of of all this if you look at uh, some of the things that you know said in the said in the bible as we're talking about angels uh, they would they said that gabriel specifically uh you know carried the trumpet and he would he would blow it whenever there was an important message i think in revelations he and six or seven angels blew the horns and start playing to announce the uh return of jesus or the the um end times or however you want to say it the battle between good and evil that started to to mark that uh there is the association with harps which i always thought was kind of interesting that harps are playing in heaven that angels are are the ones being are playing them i was kind of like looking into harps at one point and i learned that harps have this really positive and interesting effect on the human psyche and the human body. It lowers blood pressure. It lowers uh, stress level. Um, it has even been used to decrease pain. Something about the sound from the vibrations of the strings and that they've even used harp therapy in places like hospice when people are in a lot of distress and a lot of physical pain. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now the angels in charge of music, traditionally the director of music in the celestial realms is Sandalphon. Sandalphon uh, was not the original one though. Lucifer was the original director of music, but when the um, fallen angels, when they were cast out of heaven, Lucifer, of course, no longer was in that role, and then Sandalphon take, took took over. So there are angels responsible for that. If you are interested in learning an instrument, if you're interested in learning about music, then Sandalphon is the archangel for you. I think I mentioned in the last video that I've activated that particular attunement whenever I was trying to, you know, learn music or get a better experience and learning from a teacher and it seemed to work out so there's definitely something uh to that all right now how would you use this in a practical sense if it's true that music is connected to the angels how could you use it well i've actually seen in quite a few books of magic that if you are wanting to communicate with an angel that the fastest way to get their attention is to sing to them. And, and you don't need to, you know, play an instrument or anything, but sing their name. Uh, that, that when that happens, that you get an angel's attention and that they're 
more likely to be kind of be present. And speaking of singing anyway, I thought it was interesting when I was, when I discovered that, you know, the, the angels are broken up into categories called choirs. And then when you go into church, then the singers in the church are they're collectively referred to as a choir. So, so singing is a good way to connect with angels and to, you know, praise and, you know, even gratitude. I think that would be actually pretty good to sing, to sing uh, something in, in gratitude of what you have, what you're thankful for. Well, anyway, just wanted to do a brief video on that. So please subscribe and like. I'll put a link in the description uh, about the um, attunement store. If you want to connect with me on Patreon, I'll put a link to that too. I have a whole bunch of different services that are on there for that. Okay, take care guys, and I will enjoy your weekend. I will see you in a future video. Bye-bye.